Okay, now we go to problem 652. Um, in this problem, uh, there is a beam, and this beam is subjected to a, an internal moment M of 30 kN. And the question asks to determine the maximum bending stress in the beam. And the beam is made from uh, A992 steel. Uh, and then the question also asks to sketch the bending stress distribution on the cross the cross section so what happened here is you are given the dimension of the I section beam so basically you have this flange top flange web and the bottom flange so the top flange here you have this width of 100 millimeter okay and then the thickness of 15 millimeter and then for the web, uh, for the web the thickness is 100 millimeter with this uh, with this height, okay, you can do that. 150 minus 50 minus 50, right? And then so same goes with the the bottom flange, right? So uh, you can uh, okay in this problem actually you, you need to find the okay the question asks to find the maximum bending stress this one sigma max, right? So what is the equation? Sigma max equals to maximum bending stress will be bending moment times with the C, the maximum distance from the neutral axis divided by I. Right? So your M, your M can take from the given value of the internal bending moment of 30 kilometer meter. Okay? What does it mean by that is actually it's a long way for instance. You cut somewhere, or I mean you cut at the maximum moment or anywhere that you want to find, okay? You cut. You find the internal bending moment from the previous, uh, we call it the shear and bending moment diagram that we have learned, and then we have this moment. But this moment will be the same for the section, okay? But the, the thing is, the the bending stress won't be the same. When the stress will vary depending on the what what is the the equation for the the general equation for the bending stress. It is M Y over I minus, isn't it? M is constant, isn't it? Because it's the same for the same section. I is the same. I mean, you need to find I in this case, but I is the same. But the, the difference is that we will have variation from the neutral axis. At neutral axis, it will be zero, and then it will uh, increase up to maximum at the, the furthest distance, right? So this y will can be zero at the neutral axis, and it can change positive or negative, and it will go to the maximum value of of c, right? So the question asks to find the maximum. So you have to use the y equals to c, right? Okay. Now you have the m. M is from before. M is uh, I think thirty kilometer meter. Say thirty kilometer. Yes. And then you need to de uh, determine C and you can determine the I. I is what you have learned in statics. I is moment of inertia. Okay, so moment of inertia in this case, go back to statics. Okay, in this case, actually, the moment of inertia you can you can try to find the neutral axis in this case, right. But actually, the neutral axis is in the middle. In this case, in this case, not always. Okay, the reason is because this is actually a symmetrical section of beam. Symmetrical. You can see that actually from top, <coughs> from top to the middle to the bottom, they have the same dimensions, right? This is fifteen. This is fifteen. Uh, hundred, hundred. This is 10 and then 150. So this will be 120, isn't it? 120. So it will be in the middle. In the middle means that 15, 15, 150. So which means that this distance is what? Is 120. Half of that will be? Half of that will be? 16 millimeter, isn't it? 15 plus 60, 75 times 2 will be 150, right? It's not all the case like that, okay? It's, it's not, it's not. 
but you in this case is like this so you have to be careful while uh, assuming or not assuming i mean the demeaning that actually the the middle is in the middle right? <coughs> okay uh so to find the i what is i i is moment of initial about the neutral axis okay remember for i in the bending stress to find the bending stress i is a uh, moment of inertia about the neutral axis so you have to determine the neutral axis first the location of the neutral axis okay now the rest that actually here you have learned in statics you have three sections one is the top flange and then you have the web and then you have the bottom flange right the top flange and bottom flange will be the same so for this web the center is in the middle isn't it centroid sorry centroid is in the middle for the top flange the centroid is half of the this thickness 7.5 7 7.5 7.5 millimeter right and for the bottom flange it will be again 7.5 from the uh 7.5 from the the middle of this thickness 15 right so actually you can do you can determine this as 60 plus 7.5 67.5 same goes to this one it will be 67.5 millimeter okay why do you want to do this the reason is because we know that actually this shape is a rectangle isn't it so for rectangle basically the i is 1 over 12 b h cubic right for the right angle 1 over 12 b is the base h is the height so remember the base is the one which is parallel with neutral axis that's what it means by base so you have to I mean you, you need to check okay which one don't just simply say oh this is the base no the base is the one which is parallel with neutral axis right but in this case this is the case for the the web because the centroid of the web intersect is uh, coincide with the neutral axis then that's fine but for this the 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 shape any shape which is, in which the centroid has a distance regular distance with the neutral axis then actually you you have to use do this and then you have to plus a b squared okay a is the area and d is the perpendicular distance from the centroid of the shape, the centroid of the section to the neutral axis. Neutral axis, okay, not to the centroid, neutral axis, right? Okay, so we need to find i, we need to find i, i is summation of i individually plus a b squared right so the i okay let me put neutral axis i about neutral axis equals to the, the 1 over 12 base cube isn't it so b 1 over 12 base is 10 millimeter base h cube is 60 plus 60 is 120 isn't it 1 over 12 b base 10 h is 60 plus 60 this height 120 cubic 1 over 12 bh cubic this is for the web and for the for the flange it is 1 over 12 the base base is 100 isn't it 100 height is 15 oh, 15 15 cubic okay plus some space plus uh, a area is 100 times 15 100 times 15 okay area 100 times 15 d squared d is the probability distance from the centroid to the neutral axis 67.5 67.5 squared a d squared right and then this is for the top flange for the bottom flange will be 
the same like this. So we just multiply by, we just multiply by 2, right? Is it okay? So you hit the calculator, hit the calculator, and then go find the I for the neutral axis. What neutral axis is 1.5165. Times 10 minus 5 meter cubic. Okay. If you hit the calculator, be careful. If you hit the calculator, all these are in millimeter. Okay. You will get, uh, I mean, different slightly like different values. But, uh, and then you change that to meter, meter power 4. Or, I mean, you can keep in meter power 4, no problem. Okay. Uh, so we got the I. So now we can find the maximum, sigma max, right? Got the I, can find that one. But now we have to determine what is the C. What is the furthest distance? How much is the furthest distance from the neutral axis? So this is the axis. Of course, for this is by the here or here. I mean, I mean at any point, any point at the top or any point at the bottom, right? So you can see that actually any point at the bottom at the top will be seventy-five meter. Okay. Any point at the bottom will be minus centimeter. So it is the same because it's a symmetrical beam, symmetric symmetrical about the neutral axis. So basically, it's fine. I mean, you can use the C, the C to be seventy nine millimeter, and it will be the same for the top and the bottom, right? So your M max, M max equals to M C over I M is thirty kilonewton thirty times three, right? Newton meter. C is seventy five millimeter, so it is zero point zero seven five meter, right? Over I, which is one point five one six five times ten minus five. So hit the calculator. Thirty of three. Guys, please do this this uh, exercise, okay? Between the calculator, I, I told you that I have not done this for a very long time. So, actually, I kind of even I myself forgot how to use the calculator, okay? One for eight point three seven megapascal. Alright, so this is your maximum bending stress. Okay. Uh, there's another question. The question about sketch the bending stress distribution on the cross section. But before that, actually, we have to be careful here. Do actually the, the question just ask uh, how much is the maximum bending stress and you give the an answer, that's fine. But actually, you need to analyze. It's not just that, you need to analyze. It's mentioned that actually the this beam is made from A992 steel. Okay? So if you search that one, so typically for A992 steel, it has a maximum, oh sorry, maximum, the yield stress, yield strength of um, like 345 megapascal around this value, right? So you have to check if, oh sorry, sorry, this is not M max, this is sigma max, right? I wish if the student... If the students were here, then they can, you guys can uh, correct me, okay? This is sigma max, not m max. This is the m. So, uh, you have to check. So, if the sigma max is less than sigma y, then your analysis is, is correct. Okay? Otherwise, if the you you got sigma max which is bigger than uh, yield strength sigma y, then actually something is wrong. Uh, not something is wrong. It's either your 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 calculation is wrong, or if your calculation is wrong, you can do you can use this equation. Simply use this equation. The reason is because actually this equation sigma max equal to m c over i, this is applied for the linear elastic material. Once the material uh, the stress in the material exceeds this sigma y okay for that particular material the material will fail when it fails it doesn't obey the hook's law anymore okay so i mean beyond beyond this sigma y value this equation is not valid 
below si Mawai value, this equation is valid, right? So you have to check, do this, uh, analyze this first, okay? And then we go to, okay, so let's put this value. So the sigma max. Sigma max equals to 148.37. Wait, 148. Wait, just a So we can uh, delete this. There is a, a second part of this question, which is actually not that uh, difficult. The question also asked to find, uh, not to find, to draw the uh, bending stress distribution across the section, right? So what you have to do is actually you have to draw on this. Or actually, if you want to make it simpler, then you can do something like this, okay? Uh, do this, that, that, that. And this is a good practice actually to, to draw. I mean, I myself I don't like drawing. This is my forte actually. Okay. Okay. So you have this exception and the length, right? The length. Now you have the the straight axis, right? Then you know the bending stress. Uh, you know the bending stress goes like this, right? And then uh, one more thing. Remember that for the bending. Uh, why this is a bending stress? Because this is bending moment. What? How do you know this is bending moment? Remember we have discussed about this before. This direction of the bending moment. The direction of moment is this, but the x y z direction is the thumb, right? You learn this in statics. This direction, the thumb is actually parallel with the surface. The section, so we call it as a bending, right? This is chapter six. In chapter seven, uh, chapter chapter five, previously for the torsion, why this torsion? Because when you do moment, right? In torsion, you do moment. The direction of the thumb is upwards from the from the surface, from the section. So this is torsion in chapter five. This is bending, parallel. Okay, parallel. Right, so that's why this is bending moment. Bending moment will give bending stress. Torsion moment will give you shear stress. Right, tiro, uh, tau equal to tiro over j in previous chapter, chapter five. <coughs> okay, this is actually not, not correct. Okay, in practice, should follow. Uh, I mean, you should follow this kind of uh, angle. Okay, this is the practice. So what happened is that the variation of this will be something like this. Okay, this, and then, oh. See, so I told you that my drawing is was, my drawing is not good. <laughs> I didn't realize that should be a line. This, like that. Uh, how much is the same? This and that. Okay. And then the rest will be the same like that. Can draw that. Can draw this. Okay. Can draw this. So basically, it will be the bending stress distribution. Okay. The the bottom the bottom ones are the same. You can draw. Okay. And then the top part, the top part will be this, that, this, that, because these are the things that we know. So,
Okay. So now the distribution will be the, the bottom part will be in compression. Uh, sorry, tension. Sigma max here we, we got as 148.4 megapascal okay, in tension. And the top part will be sigma max equals to 148.4 megapascal in compression. Right? Compression negative. And then in the middle, this sigma at y equals to 0 is 0. And then it vary. It will vary linearly from neutral axis to sigma max at the bottom and then sigma max at the top. Right? Okay, to find the bending strain distribution, <coughs> so this is the section with the kind of length, right? So you have this neutral axis from before, right? And remember that actually we know, uh, up to this point, we know that uh, this bending stress at this, uh, along this axis, I mean at these four points, they are zeros, right? Um, and the maximum are at both bottom and top, right? And this sigma max, because you have you you have used uh, sigma max equal to m c over i, right? So now we want to uh, to draw the sketch the distribution the bending stress distribution. Basically, it's linear, right? The 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 relation is linear because it's sigma equals to minus m y over i. M is constant, i is constant y is power of 1, so it's linear, right? So y 0, y 0, sigma 0 here. y equals to c maximum, right? So sigma max here and sigma max here because of the c. So in between will be uh, linearly, linear variation. We have linear variation. And actually here, we can have another uh, value of bending stress straight away. Probably you, you are interested with this but it's at this point, right? So at y equals to 60, right? 60 meter, 60 millimeter. So you can find the work sigma at uh, y equals to 60 millimeter equals to uh, the same m. Okay, actually, plus and minus will have the uh, compression and tension only. M, which is 30 kN. 30 kilo meter, meter and y is 0 0.06 meter over i oh god what was the value of the i that is 1.5 165 10 minus minus 5 meter so your sigma at y equals to 60 millimeter is 30 power of 3 uh, of 3 times point zero point zero six divided by one point five one one point five one six five five so it is one thirty two ten minus five ten minus five okay my bad ten minus five so it is one hundred eighteen point six nine megapascal Okay. So what we're going to do is we'll see what will be the values of the uh, this variation. So here you have this, you have that, right? And you know these values to be. Okay, let's go like that. And you know these values to be how much? The maximum. One for eight. Yes. Let me make it simple. 149 megapascal, right? 149 megapascal. And then at this point, you have this and that, and the value is 119, right? 119 megapascal, right? And then you have the variation. Hmm? You have the variation, and uh, okay, let's draw this. That. Actually, should be somewhere like that. It should not be. I mean, this one is one forty nine. This is one 
119 so this one should be longer than this right that's the idea okay this and then what happened in between in between be something like this isn't it and then you have the other values like this 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 and then you have this Sketch. I mean, you should understand what happened here at, uh, at, at the bottom here. At the bottom here, panic stress is zero here. And can you see that actually it increases, increases until it reaches 119 megapascal at, along this line, right? 119 megapascal and then it increases. Okay, probably you need to include more. Variation. Increases and it reaches the maximum at this, 140. 9 megapascal okay <coughs> okay and same goes to the top so the top you have this maximum mm. let me erase this you have this maximum uh, which is 149 megapascal right the maximum bending stress and then this is at y equals to 60 millimeter right so you have something like how much 119 megapascal right and then try to draw this and Okay, so uh, you have this maximum 149 megapascal and then 119 megapascal mm, for along this line, right? And then you can draw that. And, uh, draw that. Draw that as well, right? And do this. And the variation will be like that. And the rest will be. Okay. The idea. Oh, sorry. It's too much. I mean, sorry. The 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 drawing is quite bad. Actually, I'm not good at drawing. But the whole idea is that if you if you can see uh, clearly, what really happened is what what really happened is at the top, at the bottom. Uh, sorry, at the top you have the tension. At the bottom you have compression, right? Like this direction. So at the top, uh, at the bottom, we will have zero here from the uh, neutral axis, zero and neutral axis. We will increase linearly until it reach along this line, 119 megapascal. Okay, and then you increase some more, and you becomes 149 megapascal at the at the very bottom of the flange, the bottom flange. Okay, in tension. At the top, will be in compression, right? For so at the top in compression, so basically from the axis of zero bending stress will increase until it reach the this value 190 megapascal here, right? And then it will increase some more to 149 megapascal at the very top of the top range, right? 